Well, I met Andy in 1966. I was at a party in Boston and he was introduced to me by Rene Ricard, actually. And he invited me to come to the factory. I was finishing my last year in high school, so I was in boarding school in Maryland, so that was also the year I got my first magazine cover and I was making tracks to the factory as soon as possible. It was quite a year, 1966. Um, I took my first acid trip, I lost my virginity, I was a debutante, I graduated from school, I left home, I moved into the Chelsea Hotel and started hanging out at the factory with all the amazing people that were there. I'd say it pretty much exploded all the uh, comfort of my youth. We'd been busted by... Uh the cops, Brian Jones and I, and I'd been, uh, Paul McCartney and the Beatles rescued me, and I was living at Paul McCartney's house when uh, the phone rang, and uh, the late Robert Fraser, who was a great friend of ours, said, can you bring Paul McCartney's 16 millimeter projector over to use uh, at my apartment, because we're showing Chelsea girls. And that's the first time that I beheld the beauty of Susan. And it was just an incredibly anarchic and free time. It was beautiful, really. I mean, freedom was what I wanted so much, and I had so much adolescent passion. I just wanted to be seen and be out there and play. Play, play, play. So we did. We went to parties all the time. I used to see quite a bit of Gerard Malanga and Edie. Edie was one of my favorite people. But mostly I would go to parties with Andy and pose in the corner because I wasn't much on conversation. The factory was silver. That time was before Andy was shot and it was very different. It was a very free flowing time. It had a kind of uh, mystery to it that was intriguing to me and um, I was overwhelmed with the amount of brilliance and uh, of people there and what was happening it was so good I loved uh, the Velvet Underground so much I met Nico that year so David so when's the first time you met Susan then she was uh, doing a movie for Andy Warhol she was up on a, like a platform like a mannequin almost like a mannequin coming to life You know, Suzanne, there is a, a story I wanted to tell you. A while ago, uh, I had a friend of mine who called me the night before he died. And uh, just to check on how was uh, my children, and uh, you know, how I was. And, uh, so he called up and he said, how are you doing, Michel? And I said, fine. And how are the children? Said, They're fine. And deep down, I knew that he was going to die in a matter of a few days or whatever. And I felt this kind of uh, weight on my stomach, you know, this kind of knot turning me down because I couldn't say to him, you know, man, I know that you're going to die. But one thing that I, I told him, I said, why you and me, we never made any compromise. Why you and me, we were always like dogs and cats and we used to stand you know, from each other and work, but... And he said, oh, don't worry about it, you know, uh, don't worry. And I said, you know, I wish I was going to be the one making this uh, compromise. And he said, first, now you have a duty to take care of your kid. 
take care of your family, everything is going to be beautiful for you. And he said something like, uh, and you're a star. And that broke my heart, you know, I had tears you know, down my cheeks and uh, obviously uh, I couldn't sleep all night and the day after I went back to uh, the editing room because I was finishing a movie and uh, a friend of uh, his called me up and said, you know what, he's gone, he's gone. And that left me with this test, on me, this test in, my, in my mouth. And it was like I understood what it meant to have a friend, you know, because I had a friend. That's so beautiful, the way he called you before he died, though. What a beautiful thing to do, you know? For me, I mean, I've had so many friends die. It's, uh, it's almost like our generation had some kind of war or something, you know? But, like, um, Edie died and Nico died and Danielle died and Andy died and Waze died, and Zoli died, and, and uh, all my friends from that time we talk about. <sighs> and the thing that gets me the most of all is that I can't ever I can't ever say anything to them again, you know? Death and Susan seem like a paradox, an impossibility. They don't fit together. I can't talk anymore. I know sex. What? Really, I think that you've, you've got some incredible nerve to be approaching me on this thing all the time, really, you know? You've got to back off a little bit, you know? I'm so impressed by your cooking, it's really good. Mm. So you like my pasta, right? I like your pasta. Mm. Yeah, you're a very good cook. I try. Will you succeed? <laughs> Do you remember when we went to this um, restaurant in Main Street? Uh, you know, Chinois on Main? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, I don't know. <coughs> I told you I don't want to talk about this. I can't believe you're talking about this. Well, I think it's a very, 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 very funny story. And I still like it. And I believe that uh, if I talk about anal sex, it's only me who's talking about it. You really want to tell this story, don't you? Yeah. You have to communicate this story? I Go ahead then. Okay. Go ahead. You fine. tell this story. I think, I think, okay. it, I think it's a very funny out. story. You love it. All right. I love okay. it. Go I ahead. love. I love to see the fact of two guys. I mean, you know, a You girl. really have a need to yeah. communicate yeah, exactly. this, don't you? Okay. Yeah. And I see this guy and this girl opposite, and they are very hot for each other, right? Yes, they and were. And they are trying to schmooze each other. Totally. Right? Totally. And they are horny for each they other. They were like this, and, and they were in, in each other's eyes, exactly. and touching each other. Exactly. Yes. And what do I do? What do I do? You start talking about... Anal sex. Huh? Yes. <laughs> So big deal. And yeah, they but move, you spend so, so much time. Why do you put so much energy in affecting those people across the table? I mean, you know? Two words. Um, these guys and taking the hand and this guy moving and I saw the horn um, underneath the table. I said, boy, man, you know, they're going to fuck each other to death. You know, so that's America. What America? <laughs> the country of freedom. <laughs> People in love with Chinois and men? Yeah, well, this is where you take your best girl there. I mean, the dinner is going to cost you about $125 for two, so you better make sure that, you know, it's the right girl.